vegetables, I'm gonna chow down my vegetables I love you most of all My favorite vegetable Garden Dude here. I got a great news to bring to my audience today and that is I'm finally able to add a third favorite veggie. You know that I absolutely love scarlet runner beans and I absolutely love elephant garlic because they're easy to grow and they produce tremendous amounts of food and they're very nutritious. Um, my new favorite veggie is walking stick kale. Now this is a kale plant and as you all know I live in California uh, and this is so nutritious these leaves are just absolutely the most nutritious thing you could possibly want to eat. Uh, the walking stick kale is named such because the stem is extremely dense and hard and when it finally flowers uh, the people where this originated would dry the stems out, they would lacquer them and then use them as walking sticks. Now I believe in using trekking poles, high-tech trekking poles for walking, so I won't use these for walking sticks, but I certainly will use them to support plants for lattices, things like that. This is a wonderful organic stick. It could also even be used as a weapon. So walking stick kale is definitely one of my favorite veggies of all time. It takes up about one square foot of ground. This plant is 14 months old and shows no sign of flowering. My friend Ron, who gave me the seeds, which are tiny little poppy-sized seeds, uh, he has a patch of this in his yard where he threw some seeds out a few years back. The stuff grew, and then after it flowers, it automatically seeds itself. So this is a perpetual patch of walking stick kale that Ron has. And he has a whole collection of walking sticks that he made from the stems. So walking stick kale, a wonderful plant. He gave me the seeds, and I decided I was going to try growing them in containers. And here is the result. They put like nine plants in this relatively large container, but look at them. They were planted at the same time as the other plants in my garden, and yet these plants are only about three feet tall, and you can see the leaves are very, very small compared to the other ones. In fact, there's one of his brothers over there, and you can see what a much better plant it is growing it in the ground. So that was a mistake I will not repeat next time. So harvesting the walking stick kale couldn't be easier. Go up and pull the leaves off like this and you can see they're extremely big in quantity. Like I say, one of these leaves will probably give you a whole meal. So I'm going to show you how to produce a bunch of it that you can then freeze and keep around for later and very convenient addition to any kind of food that you want to add to it. Mmm, good stuff. Okay, the first thing you do whenever you're preparing a vegetable, of course, is you wash it. So we'll wash the leaves. I can turn on and you'll notice, if you can see closely here, that the leaves are actually a little bit waterproof. So that if you look closely, you'll see the water beating up on the leaves. This particular plant is pretty healthy. I don't see any aphids on it. If there were, I'd just simply brush them off or scrub them off. Now the next step in preparing the leaves is the center stem here of each leaf is very much like the trunk of the plant. It's extremely hard. So this probably, you probably could eat it if you were starving, but uh, in this case I just toss these things away. And then I'll cut the leaf down the middle and set them aside like that. And then continue doing that until I have all of my leaves processed and I'm using an extra large knife here and you'll see why in just a moment. Oh, let's finish off this batch with this one here and you'll notice that uh, on, the leaf, on the stems sometimes there's little leaflets and stuff like that you know, you can, you can throw those into the main bunch because they're, they're good to eat. Okay, so now we're come to this part and what I like to do with the leaves, and probably you folks out there know more than I do about food processors and stuff like that, but what I like to do is to take my big giant knife and then cut these puppies up and just to use the knife to cut them into small, small pieces. And the small pieces are going to be what constitutes uh, our preservation method so that we can then throw these things in just about anything that we want to. Salads, soups, uh, rice, anything you want to. This is just really good food. 
So here we have smaller and smaller pieces. And, okay, and once we get it to the size that we want, I usually go a little bit smaller than this, but I'm going to experiment and see how this size will work. Then, my friend Ruth told me a pretty good system where you take and you put a little bit of olive oil in with them. So let's do that. And then, let's see, do I have any lemons today? Nope, no lemons. So then I'll add a little bit of acid. I'll put a little bit of balsamic vinegar in these. And then that will help to tenderize the leaves uh, chemically. So that makes them kind of nice. So and she always says too that you take and just mush them around and that that helps to get them ready to be digested. So I'll go ahead and finish this off. Now I'm going to steam these for about a minute or so and I'm going to do it this time uh, using the microwave. If you don't like using the microwave uh, you can certainly steam them any way you like. And some people say you don't even have to steam them. So put a little bit of water in this microwave safe container and I'm going to stick it up into the microwave. Make sure we got the lid on there in case it pops. And I think I'm going to go a little bit more than one minute. Uh, usually if I'm doing a small amount, I'll go like 55 seconds or so, but I think one minute will be just about the right amount. Okay, that's ready. Let's get these guys out of here. Got to leave the lid in. And let's check it out. So here is our nice lightly steamed kale. Let's check it and see if it's done enough. Okay. It's very, very tender. Mm. I can feel the vinegar working on the leaves. Okay, so that's done. Let's let this cool off now. The kale has been uh, cooled off a little bit now, so now I'm going to put these into freezer containers. and. Uh, that way we can stick it in the old freezer and these things will be available uh, any time in the future to add to any dish that I'm preparing and give all that wonderful super kale uh, nutrition. I especially like these smaller containers. I got these cute little containers here that are really good for like individual servings and stuff. And then I've even got smaller ones that also just for myself, if I'm fixing up a bowl of soup or a dish of noodles or something, I can unfreeze one of these and stick it into the dish, and I'll have a much more nutritious dish. So walking stick kale, one of my top three veggies. Okay, I'm going to show you how I like to start uh, these walking stick kale plants. I simply take an egg carton and then cut X's in the bottom of each of the compartments and then I'll fill them up with uh, some starting soil. I keep my seeds in this handy little container here and here's the walking stick kale and you notice that the seeds by the way there's some chafe in there also but the seeds themselves are tiny tiny little guys so you have to kind of plant them carefully. You've got big sausage shaped fingers like mine, it's hard to deal with these little seeds. So what I do is I'll pick one out and I'll drop it into the medium and then use a chopstick to stick it in place. And because I've put the X in the bottom of the carton, um, once the sprout starts, then all I have to do is to take scissors and cut the entire egg part where each seed is out and then stick it in the ground and it will automatically just grow through the uh, bottom of the egg cart. So that's the way I like to start them and from these tiny little seeds 10 foot tall kale plants grow. And once you've got them all nicely into the medium, a little bit of water will keep them happy until they sprout. And then we'll have those nice big plants. Here's a tip from the dude. This is one of the best things you can eat for your health, but a lot of people don't have a, a taste for it. So when I first started eating this, I said, you know, I've got to develop a taste. So I was sitting there and I was 
tough and I was chewing it, chewing it, chewing it, chewing it. And then I thought to myself, you know, all this chewing, you know what it's like? It's like eating a steak, just the same amount of chewing. And then I thought about that and I started appreciating the flavor and I started appreciating the texture and I especially appreciated the nutrients that I was getting into my body. So, mmm, develop a taste. I have my poor old earth flag, like our mother earth has seen better days, has been abused, is kind of tattered and torn, and this probably is the best reason why we need to malama Mother Earth. Yeah, yeah.